my favorite question I get asked sometimes when I'm driving is, you know, what kind of gas mileage does that thing get? Like, You're kidding me, right? You're absolutely kidding me? I have no freaking idea. <laughs> you missed this earlier, but you, do you know who owned this car? No. This is one of the two drivers that were ever owned by Enzo Ferrari. This was his. His other one was a 330 dual headlight, which is in that picture over there. It's up in my house in Germany. This is not particularly a comfortable car to take in long distance. It's comfortable. The wheel is this big. Sit in this car. Look at this. Okay. Look when you sit with your butt. Look where the top of the steering wheel is. Oh, God. I mean, I'm planning on actually having the cushions redone to raise my ass up because yeah. I can't. Look, look, look at the top of the wheel like you're driving a car. Your sight line. Your sight line is right there. Yeah. Okay. And, and I quite often do this while I'm driving. Yeah. You know? Um, so I got to redo the history. <laughs> yeah. And I think part of it was, is when, and I don't know if all 250 GTs are this, but when Enzo owned this car, my guess is they did the seating a little different because he was a big guy. Yeah, he was big. Yeah. And so they might have done it just to accommodate his belly and his, his position. I don't know. There's something special about driving this car down the street. Or drive down the street. And you know what the most common styling mistake in this car is? Everybody who sees this car, even when they, I, I guess they don't look at the logo, oh, that's the James Bond car. They think it's an Aston Martin. Aston Martin. And, and, you know, that's one of the few cars I want when it's a nice DB5, but yeah. people confuse us with a DB5 all the time. So, pretty weird, huh? How did you get this one? I bought it from the Ferrari factory. From the factory? Yes. I do a lot of stuff in the factory, so they give me a lot of things that other people don't have access to. This is Tori Spelling's 14th birthday present. No. It's a half scale model of that blue Ferrari over there. Oh, oh, and it I'm runs sorry. and drives. No, no. Way. It's even a licensed car. I mean, you can no. take it out on the road. It's got the yeah. actual fuel engine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's got an engine in the back. It's a. Uh, the trans has got a problem. My son was driving it out in the back parking lot. He blew out the trans. Oh. So I gotta fix that. That's a lot of the wrong car. This is the second most valuable car turned down $20 million for this car. No. Uh, I will never sell it. They've only ever built 200 Spiders, but they only made one like this. This is the Paris Show car in 1965. This is the original paint, the original interior. When I bought this car, this car had 3,000 kilometers on it, which is 1,800 uh, miles, okay, approximately. Um, it's the only time they ever did this, put in a three-seater. They, this is the first variety that ever had electric windows. The first one they ever painted this color. This car is priceless. And like I said, I got a picture of Charles de Gaulle standing like this at the Paris Auto Show in 1965. So, and now this car has went from 3,000 kilometers. It's got over 55,000. I drive it. It's actually got more miles in the air than it does on the ground. I've, I've raced it in Italy, Spain, France, Germany. As a matter of fact, the reason I became a Formula One driver was because of this car. I was at the Ferrari factory. They had a special tour of old 275s like that one right there. And they invited me to bring this car, so I did. And they said, the fastest you could drive Fiorano, the track, which is that track right there on the wall, it's at the Ferrari factory, the Formula One track. It's the fastest you could do this two minutes and 43 seconds in a car of this vintage. So I got out, and I, we were all excited because they never let anybody drive except the Formula One team. Got out there on the track, got off, and they went, you, come here, Natalia, you, I need to talk to you, you need to come. Stand here. I'm like, oh shit, I'm getting kicked out, what'd I do? And then they said, just stay. Then a couple of guys came down and said, do that again. I said, okay, do what? Drive. Okay, so I'm thinking, what I do? So I go out and I drive, just casually, did another one. They said, um, you did that in two minutes and 23 seconds. And, and I said, yeah, 20 seconds faster than they said was possible, which is a huge number. That's like going from a 80 to a 60 in golf. <laughs> and so, so they said, wait here. And two guys come down, a little French guy about this tall and a German guy about this tall. And they said, do it again. And I thought, okay, if I, don't do, if I do something wrong, I'm getting thrown out. I did it again. And they looked at me and said, have you ever driven a Formula One car? I said, no. And they said, would you like to? I said, sure. That was Michael Schumacher and Jean Tat. Oh. Michael then taught me how to drive a Formula One car. Um, this is my 2001 Formula One car. Wow. This is actually the most advanced Formula One car ever. Because after 2001, they started changing the rules. And I mean, realistically, I mean, this will kill the current car. Yeah. I mean, this is a V10. Those are a V8. This is a. This thing is an insane rocket ship. How fast did you drive this? 258 miles an hour on the front straight of Monza, with no downforce. Well, no downforce. Well, no down Very down. down. Trim down. Trim down. Yeah. Yeah. I lost my downforce once at Montreal in Canada, 
and I crashed at 186 miles an hour into that guardrail over there and hit it head on. Where when I got out of the car, before the ambulance crew showed up, the crew to cut that up because they can't run the race without with that. So yeah. they were cutting it out. I go, what are you going to do with that? And they go, we're going to throw it away. I said, no, you're not. You're shipping, it, you're shipping it to my museum. I'm keeping it. Um, so, and I got out of this car without a scratch. You know, at 186 miles an hour down. What was this car? This one, yeah. It, and it crushed. You just crushed the nose cone? All the way to here, yep. which you can see there's what's left of it up there. The entire front right suspension and this tire hit the wall. It hit yeah. just at a slight angle in that corner. This broke off, and you can see the onboard cameras. It flew in the air, came around right here, coming right at my face, went whoop, and it fell in the ground. Wow. So that actually saved my life. And those are on all the Indy cars now, too. It's on every open yeah. wheel car. Yeah. That's required. Wow. But I still race this. I'm going to race it all season next season. Very quick Formula 3000. I've raced this in Nürburgring. I've raced this in uh, Paul Ricard. Um, but this car's been all over the world. It's raced in all the great tracks. And next to my Formula One car, this is as close as you can get. This is the fastest thing you can get to, without having Formula One. Pretty neat car. Now, if you look at these, this was the only original white on white Roadster, Diablo Roadster built by the factory. Great car. So cool. It's a sexy car. Oh my God. But if you remember way back when, if you're close to my age, you had an Alpine poster on your wall with a Lamborghini Countach, yeah. and there were two. There was a red one and a white one. This is the white one from the poster. And it runs and drives, no joke, really well. And then I got my Gold Wings, because I'm going that I have the, the DeLorean, the Bradley GT, the Brickland. I, mean, I, I always love the Opal GTs. I have two Opal GTs, the one you see over there, and another one that I got out making it Gold Wing, because I saw that someone in Germany made a Gold Wing one, and I, I got to have one of those. Now this is a BMW M1. They built 453 M1s, as you know. But they only built two specific wide-body ones like this one uh, for a streetcar. The rest were wide-body bolt guns that were used in races. The other one of these is painted by Andy Warhol, and it's in his museum. So this is the other one. Runs and drives great. These are mechanical fuel injection. So it's a straight six mechanical fuel injected car. Runs great. This is 1981. So if you're my age, I'm 47. These were like the supercar. BMW built this. This is 100% original, even the pearl paint is original. But you gotta be a kid growing up like me where you're looking yeah. at it going, oh, uh, I'll never have one of those. Now this car's pretty cool, I gotta tell you about a couple more. This is a 1964 275 GTV. People consider this the prettiest Ferrari ever built. It looks like an XKE almost. In some ways it actually does. I think they, they, bought, they, they used some of those lines. This car, when I bought it, had 17.6 miles on it. It's a 1964 it was brand new. It was in a museum in Verona, Italy. So it was basically 28 kilometers, so roughly around 17, just under 18 miles. And uh, it's brand new. I mean, it's 1964. And so now it has like 1,500 kilometers. I drive it to Home Depot. I've had two by fours stick out here. People are like, what are you doing? I'm going, I'm going to get a two by four. Yeah, that's a 12 cylinder front end, okay. eight cylinder mid engine. This is one of the best Ferraris ever built, the 550 Marinello. Phenomenal car, self adjusting valves. Much better than a 575, which came after it. Uh, this car is just a wonderful car. Yeah, these are even more affordable. These are the most underrated front engine modern Ferraris. The 456. Nobody wanted them. Nobody wanted them, but you know what? I mean, same engine, same it was, technology. Nobody wanted them because of the back seats. And you know what? This car goes 200 miles an hour, 199.6 miles an hour. This is a California Spider. The top comes down. Um, one of the fun stories about cars, and when uh, Justin Bell does this little cute TV show, uh, Justin's a good friend of mine, he does this show for eBay Motors, and he's the only one I ever let film a show in here. And I was telling the story of the cup holder. I bought my wife her four, first 456, and she stopped driving it. I'm like, honey, I thought you liked the car. She goes, it doesn't have a cup holder. <laughs> so I had my machinist, it was a $10,000 billet aluminum block that we machined to make this one custom cup holder. Then I sold the car, and, and bought her the newer one, the, the 98. And then I realized, oh shoot, I should have taken the cup holder out. Well, about three months after, I get a call from this guy, hey, do you used to own this car? Yeah, I just bought it from the dealer. He goes, do you have the ashtray? I go, yeah. And he goes, somebody put a stupid cup holder in this. I went, I'll be right there. And I drove to Burbank and I said, here's the ashtray. Thank you for the cup holder. But it's not in that car. So then when I bought her the 360, again, no cup holder. So I was talking, Schumacher helped work on this car. Lisa did the design of the freight car. Uh, I said, you guys got to put a cup holder in. Because they were really touting this as a, not a woman's car, but you know, a daily driver. And I said, you need a cup holder. They're like, no, we don't do that for ice. I said, make me one. I'll even draw you pictures. So in production, they were going to 
do it as a custom, but once they did it, they said, you know what, that's good. And this became the first production Ferrari with a cup holder. And they did a lot of customs. So they embroidered my wife's name in the seat, all this stuff. So my wife's this tall. So if you look, if the seat's all the way forward and all the way up, don't tell your sister I said this. I, I'm not here, I'm not here. So my wife's so tiny, Ferrari did this for her. Made her a booster seat. Oh, and now the Ferrari dealer has the local guy I had who's recovered it, making these for clients where the women buy them and they're too small. Oh, yeah. So this goes in. But I couldn't make it permanent because when this is in, if the seat's all the way back and all the way down, I can't put the cars. These, most, most underrated Ferrari probably of all time in my opinion, these are the 308 GT4. You can, you, you can get these for nothing. A super clean one, 30 grand. A cheap one, 20 grand. Um, but this particular one is really cool. It's got a, um, a 3.4 liter Mondale engine in it. Yeah. So if you take a look at the, at the back, if you know these cars, you, they shoehorned in this thing. So it's fuel injected, because none of these were ever fuel injected. These are all carburetor cars. Um, but this one, 